and the talk will be given by Wehu. Is this working? Okay, uh, so I'll talk about an analysis of the TCD algorithm for data visualization. This is joint work with Sanjeev Arora and Pravesh Kothari. Uh, so let me begin with an overview of this work. So we are interested in understanding a very popular and practical algorithm called T-Distributed Stochastic Neighbor Embedding, or T-SNE for short, which was developed by Van der Matten and Hinton back in two, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, so this algorithm is one of the most popular methods for data visualization. And uh, it has more than 5,000 citations last time I checked. And uh, uh, it has been successfully applied in a number of different domains. However, uh, this algorithm is a heuristic based on non-convex optimization. And no rigorous theoretical guarantee was known before this work. So long story short, uh, our contribution is to give a theoretical analysis of TSNE. And uh, uh, for this purpose, uh, we first need to uh, define uh, what is the guarantee we want to prove. So uh, we give a formalization of the notion of visualization for clustering. Uh, and uh, based on the formalization, we prove uh, a theoretical guarantee of TSNE on some standard classical models of clusterable data. Uh, such as mixture of Gaussians or more generally mixture of log concave distributions. All right, uh, so what do I mean by data visualization? Uh, the motivation is the following. Suppose we are given a high dimensional data set and the question uh, is uh, how can we get a feel for the structure in the data? So uh, this can be either maybe clusters in the data or any other structure that you can think of. And uh, so for example, uh, uh, suppose our high dimensional data set contains some genomic information of different people. And uh, we won't be able to tell anything just by looking at this data. Uh, but uh, a simple idea is to do dimensionality reduction and more specifically uh, to reduce the data dimension to two. Uh, so this is because uh, we can visualize a two dimensional embedding of the data set on a scatter plot. And the hope is that uh, maybe we can uh, see some structures of the data uh, by just looking at this plot. So this is what I mean by data visualization. Okay, uh, so I'll just show you a very nice application in cancer biology. So in this study by Taskson et al, uh, they applied uh, this T-SNE algorithm uh, on some genomic data of a group of cancer patients. And as we can see in the 2D visualization, uh, there are um, uh, basically, uh, uh, apparently there are different clusters among these patients. And basically these clusters correspond to different cancer subtypes. And more interestingly, some of the subtypes were even not known. So in other words, these people were able to identify some new cancer subtypes uh, using visualization. Okay, so what is uh, this T-SNE algorithm? Uh, the high-level principle is uh, actually quite simple, uh, which is just to try to keep similar data points close together in the two-dimensional embedding. So in other words, uh, the goal is to try to preserve some sort of local structure in the data. Uh, and uh, just to set up some notation, uh, we assume that uh, the input is a high-dimensional data set containing n points x1, x2, up to xn in Rd, and the output is a two-dimensional embedding uh, in which yi is a point in R2, which is supposed to be a representation of xi. Okay, uh, so here's the algorithm. Uh, we first define a similarity measure between every two points in the high dimensional data set. So uh, we define this uh, pij to be proportional to the uh, exponential of the negative squared distance between xi and xj uh, and uh, divided by some parameter. And then uh, we normalize the PIJs so that uh, they sum to one. Okay, so basically uh, this uh, PIJ is large uh, if XI and XJ are close to each other, and it's gonna be very tiny if they are far away from each other. And uh, uh, similarly, in the two-dimensional embedding, we also define a similarity measure QIJ, uh, which is proportional to uh, the inverse of one plus the square distance between YI and one J. 
Okay, and uh, what TSNE does is to try to minimize the KL divergence between these two similarity measures, PIJs and the QIJs, using gradient descent. Uh, so, uh, so this is the objective function, and uh, everything is a function of the everything here is a function of the embedding points y i uh, y one up to y n, which are the variables. Okay, uh, and of course uh, this is a very complicated and uh, non-convex function, uh, but uh, that uh, that didn't stop people from using gradient descent on it. Uh, so what uh, what uh, what is the gradient descent uh, look like? Uh, so we can actually write down the gradient descent dynamics uh, in this algorithm, and uh, it looks like this. So basically, uh, the gradients uh, with respect to yi can be written as a summation of all j uh, of uh, some complicated quantity that we uh, call lambda ij times uh, the difference uh, yj minus yi. So uh, we can actually view this lambda ij as a force between the two points yi and yj. And uh, it can be either attraction or repulsion, depending on whether lambda ij is positive or negative. So from this viewpoint, uh, we can uh, interpret this algorithm uh, as an n-body system, uh, where every point yi is evolving according to the forces coming from all other points. OK. Uh, so uh, now let's see what we can prove uh, about TSNE. So in this work, we only focus on clustering. And uh, first, we need to uh, define a criterion to prove. So uh, uh, we need to assume that there exists uh, some ground truth clustering in the data, uh, which is uh, just a partition of the n data points into k clusters. And uh, ideally, we would like the, the visualization to look like this. So uh, obviously, if we see something like this, uh, we will be able to easily identify uh, all the clusters correctly. So this gives us uh, the following definitions. So we say that uh, a cluster CL is visible in the embedding uh, if the embeddings of the points in CL are all well separated from uh, all other embedding points. And uh, we can also easily write down a quantitative version of this definition. Uh, and then we uh, say that the embedding is a full visualization of the data set if uh, all the ground truth clusters are visible. So uh, this uh, is exactly uh, what's happening in this plot. So uh, with this formalization, uh, we uh, can now state our main results on classical models like a uh, mixture of Gaussians. So our theorem says that uh, if the n data points are coming from an equal weighted mixture of k Gaussians with identity covariance, uh, such that the mean separation between every two Gaussians is, is at least d to the power one quarter up to some logarithmic factor, uh, then TSNE with random initialization can output a correct full visualization after log n iterations with high probability. So uh, this is the main theorem, uh, and uh, here are some remarks. Uh, first, uh, most of you are probably familiar with the fact that uh, d to the one quarter is the minimum separation such that every point is closer to points from the same Gaussian than to uh, points from all other Gaussians. So uh, this is essentially uh, necessary for TSNE to succeed because uh, uh, it is trying to focus on close by data points. And second, uh, this result can also be extended to allow general Gaussian covariances or uh, more generally a mixture of low-concave distributions. So it's not specific to uh, identity covariance Gaussians. And uh, third, uh, just a sanity check. Uh, it's not difficult to see that simple linear dimensionality reduction methods like uh, random projection or PCA uh, would not work uh, on this setting. So they uh, would require a much larger mean separations. Uh, so we can also uh, verify this empirically. So we just generate data from a mixture of 10 Gaussians, and we can see that uh, TSNE can output a very nice uh, visualization, but random projection or PCA cannot produce anything very interesting. And uh, oh, by the way, the proof idea of this theorem is actually quite simple, and I can tell you about that at the poster. Okay, uh, let me uh, conclude with some possible future directions. 
So uh, a natural question to ask is uh, whether we can say something about uh, the relationship between clusters. So for example, maybe in some settings, we can uh, prove that similar clusters are going to be closer together in the embedding. And uh, uh, another uh, thing is um, our formalization of visualization for clustering is really simple uh, and should only be considered a first cut. And it would be very interesting to further investigate what exactly characterizes structures in the embedding that can be easily identified by human eyes. And uh, this concludes my talk. Thanks. Yes, yes, exactly, yeah, uh, yeah. Then once you use the acceleration problem, the motivation and straight descent is gone. So what is TSME really minimized now? Uh, that's a good question, yeah. You're so it, yeah, it is not, uh, so it is, not exactly the formula I wrote. There's an acceleration parameter, as you mentioned. So yeah, and it's also crucial in this proof. So and you do acceleration all the way to the end. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's not clear what it uh, what is what it is minimizing. Yeah. So it's somewhere between square root and and n. There. Yeah, that's a very good question that I didn't have time to go into. So it's a basically just a property of the like high dimensional space and low dimensional space. So the intuition is that you need to use a like a more heavy tail distribution for the low dimensional space. So yeah, that's that's also the the motivation of using this uh, uh, different um, representations.